So, Strength and Compassion is a book of photographs and essays from eight different countries where I did international humanitarian work and documentary photography. But the book is really, it's not about uh, people like Paul Recessa Begina, who gave shelter to others during the genocide. Uh, it's not about uh, refugees from Bosnia who were able to create hope um, after ethnic cleansing. Um, and it's not even just about uh, children who were survivors of landmines and polio in Cambodia uh, who were able to live with joy and with dignity. What the book is really about is about what we can learn from them. We know that uh, we all face difficulty in our lives. We all face pain and hardship and challenge. But uh, what Bobby and I also know and what Paul Recessa Begina knows, and what Nessie Godin knows, is that it is also true that human beings have an absolutely incredible capacity for courage. And that, e that people who have lived through these most difficult circumstances have a tremendous amount to teach us about how you can really create hope in the world. And that's what strength and compassion is about. It's about how we create hope in the world in order to do our job every day to help to repair the world and make it better. And so what I thought I would do tonight is just share with you a couple of the images and a few of the thoughts from the essays in, uh, in the book. Uh, I took the first photograph in this book 14 years ago. And uh, this is, is one of those first photographs. These are Bosnian refugees um, getting off of a bus that had been chartered by the United Nations. Uh, they have just arrived in the Goshen Sea uh, refugee camp. And uh, I was 20 years old at the time that I took this uh, photograph. And every one of them has literally, at this moment, lost every material possession that they ever had. Some of them had watched their homes burn to the ground as they walked away from them. And they had a few moments to gather what they could, put it in a few bags and boxes, and they've just now arrived in the Goshen Sea refugee camp. But one of the things that was striking to me about my work in these refugee camps was that it was there for these people who had lost so much, who had lost not only their material possessions, but many of them had lost family, and they had lost relatives. Um, it was these people in the refugee camp, who taught me what it really means to create hope. And in the essay on hope, I write, hope is not something apart from ourselves, something out there, something that must be found in the world. We create hope through action. And in action, suffering becomes not an end, but a beginning. It can be the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of courage, the beginning of compassion. These acts do not need to be grand. One refugee knits for another. One refugee knits for another. An elderly woman steps off the bus and into the camp, and a boy gives a hand with her belongings. A child draws a house. These simple actions alone are not enough to fight an army, to protect a home, to prevent a crime, to heal a wound. But they are enough to rekindle the embers of hope. And with hope comes energy, and with energy comes the ability to act again, and then again, and then again, until ultimately, thousands of individual acts of energy and compassion come together, and we find that we have fashioned a new day. In the essay on strength, I write a lot about neighbors. Um, because there were uh, folks like Paul Recessa Begina and others in Rwanda who gave shelter to their neighbors. And one of the things that was striking for me uh, when I was in Rwanda was that um, so much of the analysis of what happened there involved an analysis of twisted notions of race and ethnicity. Uh, people looked at the colonial history, they looked at uh, the inaction of the United Nations and of the superpowers. But what was so striking to me was when I was actually in Rwanda, was that almost everyone who talked to me told me a story about their neighbors. 
And it was neighbors and friends who made a difference. And I write, there were neighbors who risked their lives <coughs> and the lives of their families for months on end to hide other neighbors behind false walls, all the time praying that not a single sound escaped at the wrong moment. Where do people find the strength to make the right decision at the critical moment? Where do we find our strength? I relate um, in the book uh, one story from my experience there. <clears throat> I remember standing outside a healthcare clinic in Rwanda, and another volunteer pointed to a young girl with a deep machete scar that ran from behind her right ear across the back of her neck. We look at a scar like that. We reflect on the evil that was the human hand that created that scar. And we can be tempted to walk away from humanity altogether. But when that same child smiles at us, when that same child lets us know that she has survived and she has grown, then we have no choice. We have no choice but to go forward in the knowledge that it is within our power and that the world requires of us of every one of us, that we be both good and strong. The final selection of photographs I'm going to share with you tonight come from, uh, come from Bolivia and the essay on compassion. Um, in, when I was working in Bolivia, I did work there with uh, street children. And I write in the book, there are hundreds of children who live on the streets of Santa Cruz, Bolivia, commonly referred to as Niños de la Calle, children of the street. These children spend their days shining shoes, begging, selling gum and cigarettes. Some of them have small cardboard or corrugated metal shelters where they can sleep at night, usually in groups, and often surrounded by dogs for warmth and protection. Yet there are also people there in Bolivia, as there are good people here, who dedicate their entire lives to caring for those children. Um, and in the book I write, And when the children were taught art, it was, for many of them, the first time they learned that they could create beauty in the world. When the children were cared for by adults, it was, for some of them, the first time they learned that strength could be used to comfort. Part of the power of compassion is that it allows us to love others despite their faults, which is at least in part how we each need to be loved. Children of the street are not angels, and compassion is not blindness. Compassion is, however, a kind of daring. To love is to risk, and in being compassionate, we dare to love even though we know that love will bring with it disappointment and pain, as well as joy and happiness. One of the essential truths about compassion is that compassion requires strength. In its highest state, compassion is a form of courage. <coughs> now, these are just a few of the thoughts and a few of the images from Strength and Compassion. I hope that you enjoyed them. And, uh, and I really, I want to thank you all for coming tonight, because one of the other things that I've learned about making a book is that with a small group of really dedicated and, uh, and wonderful people, it is possible to make a book. Uh, but to really make a book matter, right, to really bring it out into the world so that it has an impact and so that people see it and know it, that takes a far larger group of friends and supporters. And Strength and Compassion will be a successful book um, if the people who read it and are touched by it find uh, strength and compassion in their own lives. And so I want to thank all of you for, for being here to really help us give birth to, uh, to the book and to set it free and to put it out into, into the world. So thank you all very much. I really, really appreciate it.